Welcome to our lecture online. In this problem, we have another very interesting contraption. We have a bar, which has a length of 4R and a mass of 3M, which is rotating in a horizontal direction about the end of the bar at the angle of velocity omega. At the end of the bar, we have this massless bar right here with two masses at each of the ends, the distance R apart from one another, which are rotating about the end at 28 omega. What they're, what they're asking us to do is to find the total angular momentum of the whole thing right here. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have the bar plus the two masses rotating at omega around the vertical axis. Then we have the two balls, bars rotating like this around the edge. So we need to add all those angular momentums together. So first of all, the, the rotation about the vertical axis will create an angular momentum vector in the upward direction. All we have to do is take our fingers, curl them in the direction of motion of the bar and the two masses, and we can see that our thumb points upward. So we're going to have a moment of inertia vector upward. So I, let's call it I1. And then we have a second moment of inertia vector because the two masses are rotating like this. If we take our fingers and curl them in the direction of rotation, we'll have a, an angular momentum vector uh, well, I said angular momentum, not moment of inertia, angular momentum vector upward, and here we'll have an angular momentum vector outward. So these, of course, are vector quantities. And notice, to find the total angular momentum, we need to add those two up vectorially. It will be a vector sum between the two, which will look something like this. So we have L1 upward, like this, and we'll have L2 outward, like this. And if we're going to add the two together, that'll then be a vector sum. And that'll be then the total, L total. And that's what we're looking for. We're trying to find the magnitude of that angular momentum vector sum. All right, how do we do that? Well, first, let's find L1. L1, oop, and I don't want to use this color. Let me use the black color, which is also easier to see. So we can say that L1 is equal to the moment of inertia of the bar, so it would be L of the bar plus L of the two masses. <clears throat> All right, what is the angular momentum of the bar? The angular momentum of the bar is going to be equal to I of the bar times omega of the bar plus I of the two masses times the omega of the two masses. Now the omega, of course, is going to be the same for the two as they go around the vertical axis. Now also realizing that the distance from here to the point of rotation is slightly at an angle, but that's a small distance relative to this. The angle is small, so we're just going to assume that the distance from there to there is simply equal to 4R. So it's just going to be an approximation. So let's find out what this is equal to. The moment of inertia of a bar is going to be one-third the mass the mass is going to be 3m, and the uh, m, and then the l, the length squared, that would be 4r, and we're going to square that. That's going to be multiplied times the angle of velocity omega, plus the moment of inertia of the two masses right here at a distance 4r away, that would be mr squared, so it's 2m, times 4r squared, that's mr squared, and then we have to multiply times omega as well. So that is the L1, the angular momentum vector, or the angular momentum of the bar and the two masses rotating at omega in the horizontal direction. So let's go ahead and add that and see what that's equal to. So the threes cancel out, so this would be 16 mr squared omega plus 16 times 2, or 32 mr squared omega. So the total together would be 48 m r squared omega. That is the total angular momentum of the bar and the two masses rotating at omega in the horizontal direction. Now we need to find the angular momentum vector of these two masses rotating at 28 w. So here we see that L2 is going to be equal to I2 times omega2. And I2 is going to be two masses at a distance of r over 2 away from the point of rotation. So in that case, we have two masses, 2 times m, so 
m times r squared, but there's two of them, so 2m. In this case, the radius will be half of r, so r2 squared, times omega, which is 28 omega. The angle of velocity is 28 omega. That is equal to, we have 2 times 1 fourth, which is 1 half, m r squared times 28 omega. And so this becomes L2 is equal to 14 m r squared omega. Oh, let me start over again, because that wasn't there yet. Go back over here. Okay. Ready? Okay. All right, so simplifying that, that's equal to 1 4 times 2, that would be 1 half m r squared times 28 omega, or L2 is equal to half of that, which is 14 m r squared omega. So that would be L2, and then over here, this would be equal to L1. Now notice that L1 and L2 act in directions perpendicular to one another, so to find the total angle momentum, L total, which is equal to the square root of L1 squared plus L2 squared, which is equal to the square root of L1, which is 48 m r squared omega, quantity squared, plus L2, which is 14 m r squared omega squared, like that, and that would be equal to, that's what we need a calculator, so we have 48 squared plus 14 squared equals, take the square root, which is exactly 50 m r squared omega for the total angular momentum. And so if we were to draw that on our, on our graph right there, let's see here, so we're going to then have an angle momentum vector, which is L total equal to 50 m r squared omega. And that would then be the direction and the magnitude of that angle momentum vector, the total angle momentum of that strange contraption. And that is how it's done.